Welcome back again um, uh, to our global Oncotone. We are continuing our 24-hour marathon to, to raise funds for pediatric cancer drug development and research. And with our this first global Oncotone organized by Oncodaily, where this time we are supporting Oncoheroes Biosciences in their great mission. Today is the International Childhood Cancer Day, and we are all united to fight childhood cancer globally. And um, today we will have many people all over the world joining us, around 100 esteemed speakers uh, from different countries. And now we are, uh, I'm pl privileged to introduce our next two speakers. Dr. Uh, Professor Maria Babak. Hi. Hi, and uh, Professor Gemma Rakelian. Uh, so let me first introduce uh, Dr. Babak. She is an assistant professor of chemistry at the City University of Hong Kong, uh, uh, of the department of, uh, and she is the head of drug discovery lab at the, the same university. Uh, Dr. Babak is a board member of City of uh, Institute of Cancer and Crisis, which aims to mitigate in, uh, the impact of cancer uh, on cancer uh, crisis on cancer patients. She's a world known uh, in the field of drug discovery, and thank you very much for being with us today. And uh, with, uh, with us also is Dr. Gemma Rakelian. She's Armenian currently who lives in Hong Kong, uh, and she's the CEO of Institute of Cancer and Crisis, and one of our most talented medical oncologists, uh, who is a PhD now in uh, Dr. Babak's lab. Uh, and uh, I can talk bo about both of them for hours, but um, let me go forward and uh, give the floor to them. Uh, uh, yeah, not just not to forget, Dr. Arakelian also is a, a joint assistant professor with our uh, department of uh, hematology and pediatric oncology at the Yerevan State Medical University. Uh, in Armenia. So we are trying, although she is in Hong Kong now, we are trying to keep her part of her in Armenia with us. Uh, I'd like first to give the floor to uh, Professor Babak and please share your insights about this uh, important day and about this important cause and your ideas about the cancer drug development. Thank you very uh much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tamamyan. And I would like to start my uh, talk with uh, thanking uh, Onka Daily and uh, you specifically for doing such an important uh, uh, thing for, for all the cancer patients, in particular pediatric uh, cancer patients. And uh, uh, I think our friendship has evolved in the recent years. And uh, I'm really, really happy to be on board and to represent fundamental and clinical research, and in particular, research in Hong Kong and I would like to tell a little bit about what we do and how we can contribute to the uh, treatment of pediatric cancers even though uh, we are not doctors but uh, researchers and uh, I uh, mentioned that uh, we have friendship with doctors as uh, fundamental scientists but I would like to remind you that uh, chemotherapy in fact was born from the friendship between a doctor and a chemist. And I would like to spend uh, uh, several minutes to just remind you how it happened, and then uh, maybe this will help to raise more funds today towards the fundamental research. So I think that uh, most of you here know uh, the name of uh, Sidney Farber. And Sidney Farber uh, was a clinical pathologist in Boston. And uh, uh, he was working in a very small laboratory alone. And at some point, uh, he was a little bit tired of uh, being lonely there and not working with doctors, nurses, and patients. In fact, he was working in the basement of the uh, hospital. And uh, there was a lot of life happening in other floors, but he was alone and always working in his microscope. So uh, looking at his microscope. And uh, one day he decided to take a leap of faith and he decided that now he will start his own research and he will work with patients 
uh, finally, because that was the biggest uh, dream of his. And uh, so he decided to make a very serious professional switch and uh, uh, tackle one of the most difficult diseases at that time. And that was uh, uh, in 1947. And uh, uh, what was the most difficult disease? One of the most difficult diseases, well, obviously cancer, but a particular type of cancer, which was a childhood leukemia. And uh, leukemia, especially childhood leukemia, had fascinated uh, doctors and researchers for more than a century. And in fact, not only fascinated, but also frustrated. And uh, if Faba talked to doctors about his chances to cure childhood leukemia, they would uh, really be furious with him and laugh at him because at that time it was considered absolutely impossible and there was not much that could be offered. However, Farber was a very, very brave and uh, uh, ambitious man. And so what he decided to do, he decided to uh, try and see whether there can be any kind of treatments that can be used for these poor children. And this is where chemists come into play, because uh, luckily for all of us and our community, uh, Faber had a very, very good friend. And his name was uh, Yella Subragada, uh, Subarao, sorry. And uh, he was a biochemist. And in fact, he came to Harvard with a scholarship, but uh, it didn't work out. And so he moved to the uh, company, which was called Lederle. And he was working on the development of the antifolates analogs. And these antifolates, they could really work like a original folate, but with an opposite action. So instead of turning the supply on, they would really uh, be like a wrong key in the lock and they would turn off the supply. And uh, eventually, uh, Sidney Farber, he knew a lot about the research on folates from other doctors, medical doctors, and he decided to give uh, folic acid to the uh, leukemia uh, patients, in particular children. And when he got one child come to him one day to his lab, he actually administered the folic acid. And unfortunately, it had a very, very bad uh, consequence because cancer even progressed. So it even became to develop faster. And this could be the end of the chemotherapy and cancer research, especially childhood leukemia research. But Faber, he uh, thought, he looked at it as an opportunity. So if we can uh, actually accelerate cancer with the folate, what if we use a so-called antifolate? And this is where uh, he remembered about his one of his best friends. And he said, OK, this is what exactly what you are doing. You are working in the lab and you are developing the antifolates. So why don't you ship me uh, the package with this antifolate and I will administer it in one of the uh, patients. And uh, this is what happened. They quickly synthesized uh, the folate analog and they shipped it to Sydney Faber. And within two weeks, the package arrived and uh, uh, Faber administered it to the uh, patient. And uh, uh, interestingly, there was a very, very significant effect. And uh, this was, uh, uh, maybe some of you know, the drug aminopterin, and uh, uh, the um, patient really could uh, have a very, very uh, good life. Uh, unfortunately, of course, he relapsed, but uh, he was in remission for quite a long time. And this was the birth of the chemotherapy. And uh, I would like to say that uh, fundamental research is extremely important for uh, the future treatment of cancer. Because as my example shows, uh, the friendship between a doctor, or in fact, pathologist, and a uh, medicinal chemist or biochemist led to uh, the birth of chemotherapy. And uh, uh, I would like to talk about raising money for fundamental research or clinical research. Well, raising money is never easy, but it's especially difficult when you're trying to raise money in the area of drug discovery and drug development, especially if you are not a part of a big uh, pharma company and especially if you work in academia. So raising money for drug discovery and drug development is extremely tough. And I would like to uh, discuss some of the problems in uh, uh, this money raising uh, because there is, first of all, a lot of competition. And uh, there are a lot of important projects and uh, everybody is trying to get the same uh, slice of funding pie. However, uh, some of this research is really, really important. 
and uh, uh, there is always hope for young researchers and young professors uh, like us that we can also take a little bit of this uh, funding pie. That's why we are extremely supportive of this initiative today, and we really hope that at the end of this event there will be enough uh, funding raised for this very promising drug, and that maybe it will help some patients the way that uh, Farber and uh, his friend uh, helped patients many years ago. And uh, uh, also, besides the competition, the fundamental and clinical research can take a lot of time. And unfortunately, it's very complicated. And this can put some people off who might otherwise could invest. So uh, you don't expect quick result. You expect some uh, slow and maybe sometimes painful road, but really at the end, there will be some reward. So I really urge people to support fundamental and clinical research in the area of drug discovery and drug development. And uh, of course, it will help uh, to fight cancer in future. It is extremely hard to get enough money. And unfortunately, if we do not get money, this will extremely slow down the important research work. So that's why we really should unite and do this together. And even uh, a small investment also matters. And uh, just to finish this talk, I would like to say several words about our lab. Uh, so we work in uh, City University of Hong Kong and CTU and our lab in particular are very, very interested in collaborations between medical doctors and uh, uh, biochemists, biologists and medicinal chemists. And I think that uh, there should not be a gap between us because very often doctors do not think well uh, of chemists. Even in the 17th century, chemists were considered by doctors like very, very ignorant and arrogant people. We are not, and we really would like to help. So I think that we really should unite and we should not underestimate the work of doctors and doctors should also appreciate that we as fundamental researchers are willing to help. So to finish this talk, let's unite and let's try to raise as much money as possible because this will really help to beat cancer in future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Babak, for your wonderful uh, talk and for bringing this um, very nice uh, story about Sidney Farber and the uh, and the discovery of methotrexate. Uh, um, uh, I mean, I, I also like uh, usually to uh, to bring this story up because the <clears throat> the treatment of cancer started from pediatric leukemias and in general, uh, but during the, the history later on <clears throat> pediatric uh, cancer drug development kind of was neglected and is neglected right now that's why i think it's important regarding the uh, 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 collaboration between the basic scientists and doctors i 100 percent agree with all your comments and there you know there is a hypothesis that the white coat lab coat doctors got from the scientists at the end of 19th century, uh, this way, uh, trying to show that medicine is a scientific discipline. That's why I think it's ine inevitable to have this collaboration. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I'm, um, I'd like also to give the floor to Dr. Gemma Arakelian. I'm sure whatever I say about Gemma, uh, Professor Babak also is going to uh, to have the same uh, to prove my words, Gemma is one of the most brilliant minds we have, and I'm sure she is going to be the superstar of oncology in the in the global field. She is the CEO of the uh, Institute of Cancer and Crisis, and uh, under her leadership, the institute really made huge developments recently. Uh, besides being a great uh, oncologist. Uh, she's a wonderful person and a great leader. And now she's working also in the basic research lab. So, so trying to bring the perspective and learn the perspective also on the basic science and bring this up. Um, uh, Dr. Arakelian, I'd like to ask you to talk about the work you are doing through the Institute of Cancer and Crisis. Um, and thanks for being with us today. Please. 
The floor is yours. Professor Tamamian, thanks a lot for your kind words and kind introduction and greetings to all the participants from around the world who have joined our live stream today. As uh, Dr. Tamamian mentioned, I am uh, the CEO currently of the Institute of Cancer and Crisis and originally I'm from Armenia, medical oncologist. And currently I'm conducting anti-cancer research in the drug discovery lab at the City University of Hong Kong. So 15th of February is the International Childhood Cancer Day. And today we come together with a shared goal. Onco Daily and Onco Heroes Biosciences organized this peloton to raise funds for finding cure for pediatric cancer patients. And I want to talk on behalf of the Institute of Cancer and Crisis, and I want to extend our full support for this Onco Thorn. And also, using this opportunity, I would like to provide you with some insight into the Institute of Cancer and Crisis. So, Basically, our institute was founded in the Republic of Armenia in 2021. We have uh, three primary goals. First of all, it's raising awareness about the challenges that hinder cancer prevention, care and diagnosis in settings impacted by crisis. Secondly, we want to investigate and mitigate the impact of crisis on cancer patients and their access to essential care and conduct research and engage in, of course, in advocacy initiatives to advance knowledge and promote effective interventions in this particular area. So at ICC, our team includes highly respected professionals from diverse fields, including oncology, public health, social sciences, and social sciences and cancer policy. Together, we possess a vast amount of knowledge and experience, which allows us to effectively address the complex challenges faced by cancer patients and advocate for their needs in challenging situations. Mm -hmm. Through our projects and research initiatives and interviews with experts, our goal is to shed light on the impact of crisis on cancer patients and find ways to minimize these effects. We achieve this by sharing personal experiences, fostering collaborative relationships with cancer centers and experts, and developing common strategies. And our ultimate aim is to ensure that cancer patients receive adequate care during and after times of crisis. So at ICC, we understand the immense difficulties faced by those engaged in the battle against cancer, especially if we are talking about pediatric cancer. The psycho psychological toll on children with cancer is intense as they face increased anxiety and distress. Social economic challenges also are there, making it difficult for families to afford necessary medications and support services. So I want to mention also that last year, Institute of Cancer and Crisis, together with Onco Daily, organized the first global summit on war and cancer. Over the course of three days, from December 14 to 16, 2023, this summit brought together individuals and organizations dedicated to the fight against cancer in areas affected by conflict. During our summit, we heard from many different speakers, including doctors, scientists, policymakers, influential advocates, who discussed the urgent challenges faced by cancer patients in conflict-affected regions like Ukraine, Gaza, Sudan, Syria, nagorno karabakh and more. Around 50 countries were represented during the summit and hundreds of participants attended it. So Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, the Director General of the World Health Organization and Princess Dina Mairet of Jordan, the Honorary President of the European Organization for Research and Treatment of Cancer, gave the opening speeches and, and during our event. And throughout the summit, we had different meaningful discussions and we shared best practices and formed partnerships to improve cancer care in conflict-affected areas. And Please join us during the second global summit on war and cancer 
as we are hopeful that we'll organize second one soon as well. The Oncoton Teleton presents a unique opportunity for all of us now to join together and contribute to a cause that holds profound significance. So I want us to unite our efforts and make change in the lives of children who fight cancer each day. So I'm challenging each and every one of you to actively participate in this Teleton because your support and doesn't matter like the size or form of it. It can be through financial contributions. It can be spreading awareness or volunteering your valuable time. You'll have a direct and profound impact on the lives of children battling cancer. So I want to extend my deepest gratitude to Onco Daily and Onco Heroes Biosciences for their admirable efforts in organizing this remarkable event and for their commitment to raising essential funds for pediatric cancer research. Because now I see that this is type of crisis. Now pediatric cancer research really lacks of funds. So together, let us make this Onkoto an extraordinary success so no child has to face cancer alone in the future. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk during this Onkoto. Uh, thank you very much, Gemma. Thanks a lot for, for your uh, very interesting speech and very inspiring speech. Uh, just one quick question uh, came to my mind. Um, what's the, uh, and I think uh, this question is to both of you, what's the most challenging between the two of you working in, like, and bringing the, the different perspectives in the same lab? Uh, maybe, maybe Professor Babak will answer first. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, I'll answer first. I think uh, from my perspective, the most important is to convince the grantors and the investors that uh, uh, fundamental research is uh, really important. Uh, and the biggest problem, the biggest difference between our work and the work of doctors is that you cannot see the results immediately. So sometimes we have failures, sometimes we need to repeat experiment many times, and sometimes at the end of uh, one or two years of research, uh, we are still at the preclinical stage. Stage. So from my experience, uh, very often uh, grantors uh, uh, expect that uh, uh, this fundamental research will very quickly result in the drug being in clinics. And this is, uh, it's impossible. So I think we should really change the stigma on this research and uh, fundamental research is really important and we should really uh, bridge the gap between thinking of the medical doctors and the uh, uh, researchers in the lab. Thank so, you. As, as Professor Babak mentioned previously, in my opinion, indeed, there is a huge gap between basic science and clinical work that we usually do in clinics. And actually, I'm so thankful for this opportunity that now I have a chance to learn more about basic research because like the work that scientists are doing is amazing, but also sometimes they need guidance from doctors to understand like where, which part of the research is more important, which parts of cancers are more challenging, which, like what to be concentrated on. So there is this gap between basic scientists and between like clinic that I think need, needs to be fulfilled. And as Professor Babak mentioned previously, we really need to work together. And only in that case, there can be these breakthroughs in drug discovery. Because we are, we need to each other. We are not competing. We are, we need each We're other to make progress. Yeah, Th that's very true. And uh, thank you very much for that. And like Professor Babak mentioned at the beginning of uh, her talk, bringing the the story of Sydney Farber. That's how the, the through the cooperation only it, it started, and uh, that's the only way I'm sure. And when we were organizing, we started organizing the Global Oncoton also, the idea was to, to bring as many stakeholders in the field we have 
to the table as it is possible. That's why we have basic scientists, we have clinical scientists, we have uh, or clinicians working uh, in the in the uh, wards. Uh, we have uh, pa patients, families, survivors, uh, advocates, foundations, um, and. Yeah, that, that's very important. And uh, pediatric cancer, in general cancer, but also pediatric cancer is a is a, a huge challenge for our society. And uh, I'm sure anywhere in the world we are coming, we need to be united, uh, uh, united uh, against this disease to to save one more life and to ease one more pain. Um, uh, before closing this uh, uh, this part of the session and moving to another one, I would like to uh, uh, to use this opportunity to thank also our uh, teams working behind the scenes who we, we cannot see right now, but they are doing an uh, amazing job streaming us online on different platforms and in many channels. Right now, the team at Onco, uh, from Onco Daily, thank you very much. The team from Onco Heroes, thank you very much. And the team from Restream, uh, where we are uh, streaming, thank you very much. And uh, I, I hope I, I didn't forget anyone uh, from the teams, but uh, we still have uh, 20, uh, around 22 hours. So I will have more opportunities to thank everyone. And thank you so much to all the speakers who joined us. Thank you very much, Professor Babak. Thank you very much, Professor Arakelian, for being with us today. Have a wonderful day and thanks for all what you are doing. Hope to see you, you soon. Thank you for the invitation, Professor.